Hey guys, welcome to Med School Moose. If you are finding my channel for the first time, welcome. I normally make videos geared towards medical students, but that being said, I am a doctor and I do work in the hospital, so I am dealing with a lot of COVID-19. And because of that, I want to make more videos kind of geared towards current events in medicine. And one of the big ones right now that a lot of you have probably heard of is a medication that healthcare providers are using to treat COVID-19 called Paxlovid. So I wanted to talk about that today, hopefully demystify it a little bit and maybe answer some of the questions that you have. So a quick outline, we're going to talk about what is Paxlovid, how it works, the uses of the medication, the dosage of the medication, some of the side effects that Paxlovid can cause, and contraindications or reasons that you should not be taking Paxlovid. So first of all, Paxlovid is a medication that was produced by the pharmaceutical company Pfizer and it is an antiviral. Uh, SARS, uh, coronavirus is caused by SARS-CoV-2, which is a virus, so it makes sense that we need an antiviral to combat that. The important thing about Paxlovid is that it's actually a combination of two different medications. It's Nermatrelvir and Ritonavir, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but we're gonna go with it. And in December 2021, the United States Food and Drug Administration issued an emergency use authorization for Paxlovid. Now, what does that mean? An EUA, an emergency use authorization, can be used to expedite the availability of medicine, whether that's a drug or a vaccine, during a public health emergency. And I don't think I have to tell anyone that the coronavirus pandemic is a public health emergency. Some important things about this, an EUA is only granted when no approved alternatives exist, which there weren't any, and when the known benefits outweigh the risks. So there is a lot of heavy lifting that goes into this before it gets approved for use to make sure that it is safe. To contrast that, full approval of a medication requires a lot more data regarding how the medication is pr processed and the facilities where it's made. So Paxlovid doesn't quite have full approval, but it does have that emergency use authorization. So how does it work? Well, like I said, it's a combination of two different medications. And one of those, the Nermatrelvir, is a protease inhibitor, which in simple terms, that means it breaks down some of the proteins responsible for viral replication. So by doing this, the virus can't replicate and it can't spread in your body and cause as severe of an infection. The other portion of the Paxlovid, the other medication, the Ritonavir, actually has no activity against the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but what it does is it prevents the metabolism of Nermatrelvir, which means that the Nermatrelvir isn't broken down and it's able to do its activity and prevent viral replication. So they kind of help each other out. In terms of the uses of Paxlovid, there are a couple criteria. It's gonna be used for mild to moderate cases of COVID-19. And there are other important things. You have to be at least 12 years old. You have to weigh at least 40 kilos or 88 pounds. You do have to have an actual positive test. You can't just say that you have COVID and get Paxlovid. We need to see a positive test. And the other important thing is that you have to be at high risk of progression to severe disease. And in this case, the definition of that is a little bit loose. It means hospitalization or death. So if you are at high risk of being hospitalized or dying from COVID-19, you may be a candidate for Paxlovid. The other important thing to note with this is that it must be administered within five days of symptom onset. This is when we see the actual benefit of the medication. So if your symptoms started a week ago and you're looking to get Paxlovid, unfortunately, you're not gonna be eligible because you are outside of this five-day window. A couple other important things about the use of Paxlovid, it is not authorized for pre-exposure or post-exposure prevention. So if you were just around someone that tested positive for COVID-19 and you know that, but you don't have any symptoms or you didn't get tested, you can't get Paxlovid just because you were around that person. The other important thing, which we kind of already said, it is not for use in those with severe COVID-19 infections requiring hospitalization, only mild or moderate cases. In terms of the dosage of Paxlovid, it's going to be three tablets taken by mouth together twice daily for five days. Uh, and you can kind of see a picture of that here. It's kind of pre-packaged, so it's easy to understand. But you're gonna be taking 300 milligrams of the Nermatrelvir, or two tablets, plus 100 milligrams of the Ritonavir, or one tablet, as you can see right here. There's a dose in the morning that's three pills. There's a dose in the evening that's three pills. You're gonna do that for five days. The medication can be taken with or without food. And the only other caveat here is that if you have some moderate kidney disease, you're actually only taking two pills instead of three. In terms of the side effects of Paxlovid, there are a few. Uh, you may have altered taste, which is actually the most common side effect from taking Paxlovid. You may develop diarrhea, vomiting, high blood pressure, and muscle aches. So there are side effects, but overall compared to the severity of the symptoms from COVID-19, it's a pretty safe trade-off. Some of the contraindications for taking Paxlovid, 
It is not for people who have severe kidney disease, severe liver disease, or a history of a significant allergic reaction to any of the ingredients in the medication. The other important thing is anyone that is pregnant or those who may become pregnant probably shouldn't be taking Paxlovid. And finally, there are a lot of drug interactions, so you do want to talk with your physician before starting this medication. Taking Paxlovid itself can affect the levels of a lot of other drugs in the blood and other drugs in the blood can affect the level of, uh, level of Paxlovid. So there is a trade-off, so you do need to speak with your physician to make sure that Paxlovid is safe. But that is the end of this video. Hopefully that answered some of the questions that you guys may have about Paxlovid. If you have other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe.